Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. And as you can tell, you're all dressed in red. It's Reformation Sunday. And since it's Reformation Sunday, we decided let's celebrate. So we're going to do things just a little bit different. You guys will all follow along just fine. Excuse me when I mess up. Let us begin our worship now with the litany for Reformation Sunday. Please stand as you are able. God gathers us together today with every community seeking renewal and new life around the globe, uniting us as one people, celebrating God's gift of resurrection. When mission developers and missionaries are sharing the gospel in new contexts. Where we have not yet begun to share the good news. Where congregations are discerning new directions and praying for hope. where congregations are struggling to see a way forward, searching for vision and purpose. Here today, God breathes life into us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.
Our service continues on page 147 in the front of our red hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, O Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Happy Reformation Sunday. You know what? Jesus loves you this week, too. So, we've been talking about these church words that we use only in church, or when we use them in church, they seem to mean something different. And a couple of weeks ago, we talked about righteousness, and last week we talked about justification or justified, well, 
In this week's lesson, we get them both in the same lesson. We are justified. We are made righteous, St. Paul says, not by the things we do, but because God says we are. God says, I know you sinned. I know the pastor had sinned. I know everyone has sinned, but I forgive your sins, and because they're forgiven, you are righteous. You are justified. You are holy. Well, that's kind of a big deal, isn't it? And it's such a big deal that when Martin Luther and John Calvin and all those other reformer guys started running around telling people that, people were amazed. God, God loves me so much, he forgives my sins, and all I've got to do to be righteous is believe it. And that, that changed the world. But one of the most interesting parts of that whole thing is that St. Paul says that that's what makes God righteous. That that is one of the, the core essences of God himself, is that, that God loves us so much that he forgives our sins and makes us righteous. He justifies us, makes us just by saying we are. Pretty important thing to know about God, too, isn't it? That that is a core characteristic. That that is the essence of God. That God loves us so much that he makes us righteous. He justifies us. And next Sunday, we'll talk about he also makes us holy. Amen.
The first reading today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The renewed covenant will not be breakable, but like the old covenant, it will be expected, or it will expect the people to live upright lives. To know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and needy. The renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord will forgive iniquity and not remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The reading begins. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 46, which we will read responsibly. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its water rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nation rage and the kingdom shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Paul's word stands at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human being makes themselves right with God through works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. The reading begins. Now that we know, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ is all who believe, for there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, but in his, because in his divine forbearance, he has passed over the sins previously committed. 
It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he is just that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. He reveals the truth that sets people free from sin. The lesson begins. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. It's been two years since Slim busted Shorty out of jail, and Shorty refused to leave. Of course, such a stupendous event required a bit of celebration. Slim and Shorty called it Reformation Day, since it was on Reformation Sunday that Shorty had, that Slim had blown Shorty up in the jail. Now, of course, no one's really quite ready to testify that what happened to be sh happened to Shorty ought to be called reforming. But everyone agrees that since that day, Shorty has been a different man. There is a joy to him, even though he tries to be the old grumpy cowboy that everyone expects him to be. But the realization that God that God has forgiven his sins, that God has called him righteous, that God, that God is making him holy in spite of, and maybe even because of all of those crazy cowboy things that he has done in his life. Well, that love and grace of God, it changed things, changed his heart and changed his purpose. It changed his life. So there Shorty and Slim were in the bunkhouse on that Reformation Day. They were sipping on lemonade and eating barbecue. And of course, they shared it with all their bunkmates as well. Old Rusty, the grizzled camp cook, who was probably only 50 but looked like he was 100, hollered out, Tell us the story again, Slim. Tell us about the time you blowed up Shorty in jail. And Slim began to argue that he hadn't really blown him up. Haas and little Joe got up to leave. Hey now, old Rusty hollered at them. Where are you two young'uns going? This is the best part. Haas tried to make some excuse about needing to go work with the horses. But little Joe was in no mead mood for excuses. Why on earth, he said, would I want to hear that story again? 
It doesn't have anything to do with me. Reformation Day was a long time ago. And sure, it's great that Slim and Shorty had some adventures. I'm even glad that it means something to you. But what does Reformation have to do with me and Hoss? Shorty looked up from his barbecue, which he had been enjoying intently, took a long drink from his lemonade and said, Sit down, boys. Let me tell you what Reformation means to you, what it really means for everyone, and why it still has the power not only to change lives, but to change the world. Not wanting to have to fight about it, and Haas hoping he might get some more barbecue, they topped off their lemonades and they sat down. The Reformation isn't really about me and Slim, Shorty said. It isn't even about Martin Luther and all those folks we stole the idea from. It isn't even about St. Paul who explained the whole idea. The Reformation was about God. My Reformation and the Reformation they were celebrating down at church just this Sunday. Which, by the way, I noticed you two hombres skipped. Don't you like my bright red cowboy Reformation hat? I've heard you two talking, and I know how you feel. I felt that way a lot in my life, too. What does church and God and Jesus have to do with me? Do they rope steers for me? Do they buy me lemonade on a hot day? Do they introduce me to the pretty girls when I go to town? Them church people is judgmental. I heard you say it. And they have all those rules. Do this and don't do that. But I've also heard you two talking about your lives. How you want, don't want to be cowpokes your whole life. You want to have a place and a family of your own. You want to live your, you want your lives to mean something. You want to make a difference. You want to make the world a better place. You want to really live. You want to be free from all of the struggle and turmoil and strife of this world. Well, that's what the Reformation is all about. That's what God is all about. Jesus has set you free. You are free indeed. Haas's eyes had gotten huge. You better listen to him, little Joe. That's exactly what I've been thinking. Joe wasn't yet quite convinced. Jesus has set me free, he said. So if I quit my job, Jesus is going to feed me. And I can go out and do whatever kind of crazy things I want. And I won't ever get in trouble. I can go out and do all kinds of bad things and still go to heaven. Shorty finished chewing his last bite of barbecued rib, took another drink of his lemonade, and using his bestest, most serious, wise old cowboy face, which of course made Slim giggle, he said, you're eating free barbecue, ain't you? Then Slim spoke up. If God has set you free, you really are free. But you aren't just free from stuff, Slim said. You're free for stuff, too. What do you mean by for stuff? Well, Joe, it sounds to me like you want to be free from consequences. You want to be free from rules. You want to be free to be selfish and self-centered. But that's not freedom. That's the worst kind of slavery. Being a slave to sin is how Jesus put it. But that kind of thinking makes you a slave to all of those things that make you think of yourself before other people. A slave to all of those things that keep your life from being 
the life that you want it to be. Jesus sets you free from all that stuff, sets you free from sin, and promises you eternal life. And that freedom, that freedom is freedom for living your life, freedom for loving and freedom to have a purpose and meaning, freedom to help one another. That's what Shorty's Reformation was all about. He realized that God had set him free to live a life of love and service. Just look at him over there, stuffed full of ribs and lemonade, thinking of how he can make your life better. That's freedom for Shorty. Freedom for you might be having a home and a family that you can love and care for. It might be saving your buddy from despair or keeping the neighbor kid from going hungry. It might be riding a horse in the great outdoors every day, hanging out with your cowboy friends and keeping these cow critters safe. But all of those things that you've been told about God, how God is angry and judgmental, always wanting to spoil your fun, all those things about God being your enemy, the Reformation proclaimed that those things aren't true, that God is kind and God is loving, that God forgives you and that God sets you free, free for life, free from sin. And if God has set you free, you are free indeed. Haas and little Joe finished their lemonade while Shorty took a nap and Slim polished his new red cowboy boots. And little Joe liked the idea of being free from the idea of a vengeful God. And Haas liked the idea of some more barbecue. If God has set you free, you are free indeed, free from sin and free for living the life that God created you for, the life that will last forever. Amen. The pulpit hymn today, it's in pink again is number 514, and we will sing verses 1 and 2. Let us continue our worship 
proclaiming our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people, that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated waters. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment that we faithfully care for all of your creation. Hear us, O oh God. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort to those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O oh God. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Call all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new di diagnosis. We remember in our prayers, especially today, Ron Ferguson, Linda Kimberling, Marcia Gust, Don Stout, Ken Girardi, Barry Mabe, Dan Rogers, Stacy Flecht, Evelyn Lee, Larry Mossbach, and all of those whom we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Open our hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach us your word and give us courage to proclaim our faith. Hear us, O God. God, our stronghold, we give you thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all the Reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat>
Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. <coughs> Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, and his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with the heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sins may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with you, with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You all may be seated. For those of you who are communing along with us at home, and for those communing with your kits this morning, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. We are communing today at the rail. We will have the choir begin first, and then we will have the right side, and then the left side. We will start filling in from here and work clear around for the choir and for the right side. But when we get to the left, we're switching it up, and we will start over here and work clear around. And for those of you... Um, Starting over here, it might be simpler if you left a little bit of room so you don't run into the, to the organ. Let us begin.
We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Tomorrow is Halloween. So it's trunk or treat that from five to seven. And then following trunk or treat, it's soup and goodies in the fellowship hall. If you're going to come and bring soup and goodies, sign up on the sign up sheet on the sign up sheet bulletin board. And then since tomorrow's Halloween, the next day is the first of the month. So we've got all of our first of the month committee meetings coming up. And so all of you will be um, probably involved in one of those in one way or another. So look at that 
the list of all of those. Uh, do we have enough enough things for the election day bake sale? We'll talk about that Tuesday. We're also going to call that the election day celebration of no more election ads on TV. <laughs> and next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, so it will be a little different celebration than this morning, but it will also be very meaningful and important. And I guess I should mention that we're going to have our annual meeting on November 13th. So plan to be here so we can do our church business and then have another one of our wonderful lunches. <laughs> what did I miss that's of vital importance for us this morning? Do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? <laughs> Hello. The wards from Scottsdale, Arizona. It's so great to have you with us. And it's great that you make them feel good by hanging around with them. And <laughs> yeah, they are. That's the rich side of the wards. All right. Isn't that wonderful? Do we have any others hiding somewhere that I haven't seen?
hearing God's call and responding in love. We share Jesus' call. Thank you.